the previous segment of the show. Uh, this show is called Innies and Outies, okay? Um, and uh, thanks, Melanie, for the title for this concept. Now, what I did with the first segment was essentially um, talk about really just doing, a, you know, centering on the snare drum. keep on going but what I'm going to do is shoot out in an L-shaped style for those who just have a four-piece drum kit or if you like a normal five-piece drum kit one two three four five and then what happens is you just disregard the mid tom you know sort of thing um, what goes on is that essentially it's going to be an L-shape you can break the rules of course I already have because you can put your you know you can do this of course you can but I'm actually talking about stuff that I used to do or was given by my old teacher, Harold, who um, was very much in the style of a, you know, you just, he thought the world of Buddy Rich and all of that sort of stuff. And um, this is the, the chap that I'm talking about, you know, the style of Buddy Rich as a jazz drummer. When you watch him play, and he's one of the greatest of jazz drummers, um, what would happen is that you'd invariably see him do so much on the snare drum and then shoot out okay so what happens is that he would be an any any style so you'd have these accents shoot out paradiddles So on, you see. So that's just something about innies. Now I'd like to talk about outies, all right? And it's a little bit like inverting the idea. If we're doing everything, single stroke roll, let's say whatever it is, but on a snare drum and then we shoot out, what happens if we start out and work in, okay? Now I would like to talk about what I lovingly call the lick of the century. And what it's all about, I should hit a gong after that. The lick of the century. Oh, that's a bit dumb. Anyway, sorry about that. Compose yourself, Chris, note to self. Um, but basically what goes on is that the lick of the century was one of the, the great weapons of mass seduction with uh, 70s drumming. Um, of the likes of uh, John Bonham of Led Zeppelin, Ian Pace of Deep Purple, all of these sort of players that really defined the genre in a lot of ways. Now let me talk about what the lick of the century is. It's essentially right, left, foot. That's what it is. It's just a triplet. So you get this. And then, you know, um, one of the tricks of the trade, um, something that is often left out but should be always put in, is the, the hi-hat with the right hand. So you get it. Now what you've got there is you're playing out. Okay, you're playing on the tom-toms. That's just a concept. It's just a thought process. It's the opposite of an innie. It's now an outie. And what happens is um, with innies, when you're putting accents out on the toms, like that's obviously an L shape, which I'm talking about a lot. Um, but now I'm going to play in. So the single stroke roll is out here. Let me show you some of the things that um, John Bonham and Ian Pace did in the 70s. Um, John Bonham's famous solo is uh, Moby Dick, uh, which is on Led Zeppelin's second album, the one with a whole lot of love on it. And uh, Ian Pace's um, uh, great drum solo can be found in Deep Purple's Made in Japan album, which uh, is pretty much widely regarded as one of the best rock live albums out there. Um, of that era. I would probably put down the best live albums of um, that time would be The Who Live at Leeds. They seem to explode on that album. 
and um, Deep Purple's Made in Japan just caught them on a series of great nights when they were really burning uh, on a, their Japanese tour when Machine Head, the album Machine Head was still new. So some of those, um, to, have, to be in a band like um, that in the day, absolutely amazing. Led Zeppelin was an amazing live band. Um, it's widely regarded that their live album, The Song Remains the Same, is a good live album but didn't quite catch them at their best. Um, I've got a couple of bootleg albums um, that were fairly readily available that actually absolutely burned in some places, which I, I, um, when, when I was the absolute Led Zeppelin freak in my teens. And um, uh, yeah, some of the bootlegs are better than their actual official live release, so mm. it's all right. It's not a bad album, Song Remains the Same, if I'm going to get into it, but it did catch them at the end of their 1973 tour and in bits they were a bit tired, I think, from all their frivolity. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll save that for um, a TV show after 10 o'clock when all the kiddies have gone to bed. Anyway, so back to outies. So if I'm doing this, this is the triplet, right, left, foot. So you've got this. Of course, at the hi-hat, you've got this. And what I'm going to do is something that Ian Pace does on his solo in Made in Japan, 1972. Like that, you see. Do you see how now I'm an outie and um, I shoot in? Okay. So this is what tonight's show is all about, inies and outies. More about outies after the break. <laughs> 